I am. Abuli. Yidmoai. Yasharkawi. It is my turn today to test you in the wasteland, while sun's heat is at its peak. You mean it is your turn to torture me? Don't you find anybody else in this world, but me to give him those hard times? You are trying to raise me up again in your own way, and it is very hard for me. Damn the day I came to know Lee and her entire family. Moai Yasharkawi, from the first day I did see you, I realized that you are an idiot, stupid, useless, and moron. If you do not answer my question in a correct fashion, Lee is not for you. Understood, Yahomar. I accepted describing me as an idiot, stupid, useless and moron just because you are older than me and represent the same value as my late father, but... But do not say Homar again, Yamapuli. I want you to talk about treasury stock in general. Treasury stock is the entity's own stock that was repurchased by the entity subsequent to its initial issuance to shareholders. Treasury stock reduces the shares outstanding, not the shares authorized. Dividends are never paid to these shares. Going into detail, how treasury stock is reported? Treasury stock is reported either at cost, it is called the cost method, where it is reported as an allocated reduction of total equity, or at par, it is called the par value method, where it is reported as a direct reduction of the relevant contributed capital account. How do each of the two methods affect the books of account? When treasury stock is recorded at cost, treasury stock is debited for the full cost of purchase. But, when treasury stock is recorded at par value, treasury stock is debited for the par value of stock and the difference between the cash paid to purchase the stock and the related par amount is debited to the additional paid in capital and the retained earnings. Moai, I am quite happy with your answer, but in order for me to make sure that you understand the difference between the cost method and the par value method, could you please give me an example showing how they differ? You are welcome. Assume that Abuli's company reacquired 5,000 shares of its $1 per value common stock for $20 per share. This stock has originally been issued at $17 per share, and Abuli's company had no prior treasury stock transactions. Under the cost method, the journal entry is to debit treasury stock account for $100,000, being 5,000 shares at the purchase cost of $20 each, and the credit cash account being the cash paid. However, under the par value method, the journal entry is to debit treasury stock account for $5,000, being 5,000 shares at the par value of $1 each, and to debit the additional paid in capital account for $80,000, being the excess amount received over the par value at the time of issuance the $17, minus the $1 par value per share equals $16 per share, multiplied by the 5,000 shares. Because the $5,000 plus the $80,000 already debited is still less than the purchase price of $100,000, the remaining balance of $15,000 is to be debited to the retained earnings account. The entire $100,000 is to be credited to the cash account. The last question. What if the acquisition price is less than the par value of stock reacquired? In this case, the difference is an increase in the additional paid in capital. In fact, Gains or losses are not recognized on transactions in an entity's own stock. In addition, Treasury stock has no voting rights and receives no distributions on liquidation. Moai, I am very happy because you will marry my daughter. But we need to determine who is going to pay the marriage contract notary fees. Congratulations.